Hello. This is a, an image which Sandro Botticelli painted back in the 15th century. I think it was, yeah, down here you can read it. It's 1483, uh, sort of when he painted uh, the birth of Venus, La Nascita di Venere. And uh, I found the image uh, in an extremely high resolution, 30,000 by 18,000 pixels here on Wiki Commons. And it's a source of f f wonderful files, audio files as well. But uh, this is just uh, an image I w want to use for a jigsaw puzzle tutorial. And uh, you, of course, you can use any other image or photograph you took uh, recently of your uh, girlfriend or boyfriend or mother or father or the mountain. And um, for this tutorial, I picked the 1280 by 804 pixel um, version of the image and uh, I right click downloaded it into my source image folder uh, of the current project it looks like this this is the source images here this is a my uh, project my 2018 and source images this is the image uh, where it lands and where Maya tries to locate source images now let's have a look at Maya we start with a new scene and we create a polygon plane. We scale it up a little bit just for cosmetic reasons and we deactivate the grid because we have grid enough now. On this plane we want to project our Botticelli. Right mouse click assign new material. Now we have Arnold as our bravo bravo renderer and uh, we will pick a standard surface and so yeah you can see it here this spot here comes from the glossiness of the surface we don't want this with this plane it's really irritating and in order to make it go away we go to specular the specular weight currently is heavy so to say it's set to one and we decrease it and here you see it's gone. It's like a Lambert shader now. In order to um, put a file, an Im image on top of this uh, plane or on this plane, we need to exchange the color. And the color currently is white. The color could be darker or whatever, but we don't want it to be any specific color. We uh, click here on the checker icon and we go to Arnold again and on the texture we find the AI image that's basically the same thing which Maya provides with the file texture we cannot see it currently because we haven't selected our image and that's the final step in order to get the image to work here so we click on the folder and it looks in our current project hopefully source images here and we find the Botticelli here, the birth of Venus. Now we need to uh, either click this icon or press the key 6 and then we see the Botticelli. Of course it's uh, not scaled well. Let's go to the top view, deactivate the grid, press the key 6 and um, we can adjust this by scaling it in this direction for example if you want to do it precisely you go to polygon plane and uh, you adjust the width and the height of this image according to the pixels 1280 times 804 you could make it very precisely but sometimes it's just nice to do it just uh, according to your taste I think this uh, fits quite nicely now um, we want to cut this thing into four pieces as I said before, you can cut it in 100 pieces and there are several ways to cut polygon objects. Let's do it with a curve and uh, actually two curves and I like to use this tool now instead of this one because this creates much less geometry. This uh, is a freehand tool which creates a lot of geometry and here it's not really important to be uh, to have such a detail resolution. So I click 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 and press enter that's the first curve now press the key G which makes a 
probably means go. It repeats the last command. Click, 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 click. And press enter. So I have two curves now. I picked the two curves and the surface, which is the polygon plane. All three are selected in the outliner now. And then on the modeling, the modeling menu, I go to, wait a minute, edit mesh, because I'm going to edit a mesh and I'm projecting a curve on the mesh. That's what I'm doing now. You see in the outliner you have poly projection curve 1 and 2 now, subfolders probably, looks like them, and I can delete the original curves now. Now comes the tricky part. You would think selecting the curve and the mesh will invoke a separation process using edit mesh, split mesh with the projected curve. It does not work. And the reason probably is that this command edit mesh, split mesh with projected curve uses shapes only. And now look at this. We need to cut with shapes. And this thing looks like a shape, but it has in the hierarchy, it has another node below. And we can reach this using in the outline of the right mouse button and click on shapes. And here is the shape of the plane. Now we select the, we open this one, this is what we need, this is the shape of the curve, this is the shape of the other curve, and this is the shape of the plane. And with all this selected, two curves plus the shape of the plane, the polygon plane, we now can go to edit mesh and use the option box with split mesh with projected curve. And the option box gives us the choice between just split or split and detach the edges. And we want to detach the edges, that's why we need this. Now this is done. And all you need to do now is select the plane and go to Mesh Separate. And now you have four separate polygon surfaces. This was a little bit tricky. I know, so maybe you rewind the tutorial. There are discussions about this <laughs> maybe flaw. Uh, now we um, proceed to the animation just to show you how this basically and typically would work. Um, we could select this shelf here and move it somewhere else. But you see its center is right here currently, which is not very suitable. We would like to have the center, which is called the pivot, here in the middle. So we select all of them, and actually we don't need the curves anymore. We select just the surfaces here, and we center the pivot. Where is it? Modify Center Pivot. And now when you pick this, the pivot, the center is here, 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 and here. In a typical animation, let's go to 500 frames, which is about, well, what is it? 4 times 5, 20 seconds, uh, very short. You would typically do this. Um, let's say at frame 400 or 399, this shelf should be here. Press the key S, set keyframe, so to say. Now, let's go to maybe frame 30 move this here and rotate it like this and set another keyframe. So the animation goes like this now. It starts to move towards the rest and after a couple of seconds it will finally find its goal at frame 399 and then stay there. It could be much faster but we can do this uh, with another thing here, with this shelf, it should reach maybe uh, its destination at frame 360. We press the key S. Uh, now we go here, we rotate it a little bit, 
and maybe even in the in another axis move it a little bit upwards here set another keyframe and we do the same thing here this should be here keyframe here and a little bit later it should be at its destination now we forgot where it, where the destination is exactly um, so what we'll do is we'll just set the translation to zero and zero and set another keyframe here so that's the practical thing when we start the, uh, thinking about the animation from the end because they all uh, all the shapes reach their uh, target position already so we'll do this with this one here and it should be here at maybe 367 and uh, it should start the animation right here with a little bit of a rotation and press the key s now let me delete the curves we don't need them them anymore they irritate a little bit and the animation goes like this now and of course you can watch it in the perspective view which is always nice to have and of course you can make the objects thick if you like uh, right mouse click and then edges we want to go to the edges double click and it selects the whole um, surrounding and now you go to the polygon modeling tools extrude and you extrude it down here so you get a thickness of the whole object but that's uh, not the topic of today we've uh, created a projection and we've tried to assemble the pieces into one <laughs>